Hello everyone and welcome to a little event guide video or esports event guide if you're into the esports side of it but this is a video which should help you with participating in an event or you know you might want to share this to possible participants if you're the event creator and just on what you should do before you join an event and what you should do prior to a race day. Obviously the first thing you've got to do is find a championship or event that you'd like to participate in. So for example I uh, recently joined up to the Apex Online Racing GT3 League. You know, there's loads of different communities out there. Atrovision's got his community for Project Cars 2. You've got Next Gen Racing. They do all sorts across multiple platforms on multiple games. Um, so, you know, you can visit all these different communities and they'll all have their own championships and challenges and things like that. Uh, the next thing you got to do is when you find a particular event that you might like, is actually look at the schedule because the schedule might not fit with you. So if it's an American champion, if it's... An American based uh, community and you're in Europe the times might not relate very well or they might if you work different work hours and stuff like that to so make sure you check the schedule of the event to make sure you can actually uh, make the event uh, the event timetable next thing and the most important thing that you should do for any community event is read the rules yes it seems so boring that you have to read the rules but each championship, each tournament, each website has different rules. So, for example, um, in the Apex Online Racing, very strict with the white line rule. Go over the white lines, you will be penalised. Um, other events, like in ESL, it's mainly the in-game penalties. So you can sort of abuse track limits a little bit more. Like in real life, the clerk of the course decides uh, what's legal and what isn't. These websites decide by themselves what is legal and what isn't. You need to follow those rules. So make sure you read up on the rules. Uh, ask questions if you're not sure because, you know, every, everyone who makes an event always asks questions because then at least people are reading these rules. They, they can understand them more. And if you've got a question, somebody else is very, very likely to have the same question. So the championship becomes much clearer in what the do's are and the don'ts are. Then, obviously, if you've done all that, you want to then test out each of the cars that you might... Be participating in so for example in this gt3 league i've got a select number of cars that i'd like to race i will then go and test those cars to find out which car i actually want to race which ones are slow which ones are quick am i looking to be in the quickest car am i looking for a challenge that's something you need to test if you like everything and everything looks okay sign up uh, and if there's an introduction a place to introduce yourself to the community or to the championship or just to the event introduce yourself you know it's nice for if there's a commentator there they can actually read your little profile introduction uh, and they can get an understanding of you know your racing experience uh, and what you're going to bring to the championship uh, same for other drivers if they recognize you're a clean driver they'll be like, they'll be happily race you on the track whereas if you don't introduce yourself you're sort of an unknown uh, and that can get tricky on track sometimes if you're you're racing somebody else they might be a bit scared of you uh, that could be a good or bad sign personally i think that's a bad sign as long as you know that they're a clean racer you can have some fantastic racing uh just look at obviously as i've mentioned in the past vp isaac uh, i can trust that guy to race 100 percent, so we can have some cracking races so once you've done all that you signed up the first event is on its way so as you approach that race day make sure you practice the combination that you're about to race don't just turn up on the day so for example in some of the ESL events obviously anybody's allowed to sign up there's rules there and stuff like that but uh, as you've seen on not kill for example I lap somebody in a full lap race it's very clear in that situation that that person did not practice that event don't just turn up uh, and and because you can affect somebody else's race practice the event prior because then when you go on uh, you can then race fairly and cleanly you understand the braking points acceleration points you understand what to do and you understand how the car is going to react don't just turn up now in some championships they just want you to turn up so that's the exception to the rule however in most cases i would always practice the event prior now in my case sometimes i'll only practice an hour prior uh other times depending on the championship and the level of the dr of the uh, drivers in there i could practice three four five hours across multiple days to make sure i get that practice in and it sinks in i get muscle memory and things like that on the race day so this is kind, kind of key now because this all affects everybody so your internet on the race day coming up to the race event um, if you've got very bad internet or slow internet, so for example, as you know, my internet's not the greatest, um, my mobile does not touch the Wi-Fi. I turn it off the Wi-Fi. I close any unnecessary programs on my PC that potentially could use the internet. 
Um, I also restart the internet because the, what, what will happen is your box will cache data. So if you reset it, it then frees that up uh, and it won't lock. And uh, just, you know, if there are any problems on the box at the time where it's slowing down, that, that should rel uh, relinquish, and that means the internet should go back up to full pace. Uh, to do that, I normally just unplug the plug, count to 20, plug it back in. The usual 20 count that the IT guys will say. Uh, it does work, trust me. It does work. If you've got really slow internet and you have family that use the internet, just explain to them that you want to do something on the internet that you don't want to affect other people. Could they just minimize their activity during the time of racing? Yes, okay, that might seem a bit selfish but if you talk to them and explain it you know they, they might be happy to do that just explain what you're after uh c compromise is always good uh so make sure you talk to anybody using the internet if you have slow internet obviously if you're like what Yuhan has which is like one gig of internet speed you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want because the internet's going to be pretty stable however it always is nice to make sure that you are minimizing your internet activity because you could have the fastest internet in the world but if your ping is off the scale it's still going to be a bit of an issue Reread any rules, of course, before the race actually happens. So starting procedure, Apex Online Racing has a particular starting procedure, for example. So I need to make sure I understand that starting procedure. As you saw in the evaluation race, some people didn't initially understand that. That's why you should reread the rules before the race so you understand that you need to do X, Y, and Z uh, to have a clean and fair race. Practice just before the event, of course. Um, it's like a warm-up. So imagine you go and do a 10K run. You're going to have to warm up prior to that to make sure your muscles are going to work correctly. Otherwise, you'll get injured. Same with racing. Just practice just before the event. It just lets your body warm up. You get your muscles going. Um, obviously, you get used to the event. Your times will then should be around about where you think uh, believe they should be. And then when you start the event, you've sort of warmed up. You, you know what's going to happen on the track or you, what you should expect to happen on the track. So literally, as the event's then about to start... Make sure you turn up on time. One thing in the ESL, for example, which is a right pain in the backside, is, especially in the Go 4s, you check in, and it's between half past and 22. You've got late check-in. Groups are released at 10 past. And then you wait until half past because somebody's decided they want to go and do something else for 20 minutes. You're keeping the entire group waiting. Turn up on time. Uh, make sure you're ready so that the group can then start. Basically, don't hold anybody up. You're wasting people's time. Imagine a group of 20 people waiting for one person. It's it's just, it's not fair. So make sure you turn up on time for that event. Adjust your day accordingly to make sure you can uh, meet that time. And then as the race starts, very simply, just have fun and enjoy the race. Race clean, race fair, uh, and you'll have a cracking time in any of the community events. Um, hopefully, as you'll see on my channel, the Apex Online Racing GT3 League, you'll see a full-on massive race i mean it's massive grids uh but you'll see me race fair race clean not necessarily in the fastest car but i will be racing just to have fun so have fun race clean race fair uh, and that's all you got to do for an event really so you know make sure you understand all of that you know find a championship you like check the schedule read the rules test the cars if everything's okay introduce yourself then race day make sure you just prep for that race day internet make sure it's fine reread any rules practice before the event Turn up on time and have fun. So you enjoyed that little video, that little guide. Uh, there'll be other guides in the future as well. The Track Guides GT Sports may go back to Track Guides on PCARS 2 as well. But that's it for now from me. There's another video there if you want to watch that. My logo is there if you want to subscribe. But that's it for now. Thanks, for, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.